Hello guys, this is a continuation of our, uh, the subject flow cytometer and fax mechanism. In the previous video, I spoke in details about flow cytometer and this, in this video I'm going to speak about fax mechanism, fluorescence activated cell sorting. If you didn't watch the previous video, I highly recommend you to go and watch it because it will be much easier to understand fax mechanism if you, underst if you fully understand the flow cytometer mechanism. So let's start speaking about fax. Fax mechanism is not only a, a cell counting mechanism, but it's all, also a cell sorting mechanism. So it provides a method to uh, sort a heterogeneous mixture of biological cells. Uh, it depends on light scattering, as we saw in flow cytometer, so uh, forward scattering in light and uh, side scattering light, but it also depends on the fluorescence and it also can detect uh, fluorescence. Fax mechanism looks like this, so we have the machine, we have of course the computer which is going to analyze the data, and we have uh, the fluids container and the waste container. Now, how does it work? Fax, a fax machine looks like this from inside. So uh, we have also the flow cell and the sheath fluids, which apply the hydrodynamic forces on the cell to pat them one, one by one through the, uh, through the tube. This is what we saw in flow cytometer in the previous uh, video. The cells will pass one by one through the uh, through the cell tube, and then we have the laser. So the the cells will pass through the laser beam one by one. When the cell pass through the laser beam, um, there is the flow uh, uh, forward scatter, which is detected by the forward scatter de detector, and then there is the side scatter, which is detected by the side scatter detector. But here there is also the fluorescence, which is detected by the fluorescence detectors. Uh, here we have mirrors and uh, filters, which are aimed to filter the light and to deliver particular wavelengths to the appropriate detector. Then everything, all the detectors are uh, connected to the computer, which is going to analyze the data. Now let's speak more in details. <clears throat> Um, as we saw in forward scatter in, in flow cytometer, we have forward scatter and light and side scatter. Here we have also the fluorescence. So saying that I have a cell mixture. Inside this mixture, I have a mixture of cells, or uh, cells who are expressing a particular protein and other cells who are not expressing the particular proteins, pro, uh, pro, the particular protein or the protein of interest. What I want to do here is I want to count how many cells there is inside the mixture and how many cells are expressing the protein and how many cells are not expressing the protein. And then I want to separate this heterogeneous mixture into two groups of cells, the, the cells who are expressing the protein and the cells who are not expressing the protein. To do this, first of all, I have to design a specific antibody for this protein. This antibody is specific to the protein of my interest. Uh, I'm not like I, I can buy this protein. There are companies who uh, design specific antibodies for particular proteins. Then I have to uh, label this antibody with a specific fluorophore. Now, what I have to do is that I have to add this antibody uh, labeled or labeled antibody to the mixture of cells I have. When the prote when the antibody is add added to the cells, this antibody is going to bind specifically to the protein of my interest and then I will have labeled cells. So I, ha I will have cell the cells who are expressing the protein will be labeled with this uh, fluorophore. Now, when the cell pass through the, the laser beam, this is going to happen. First, I will get the forward, uh, forward scat, uh, scattered light, which is detected by the forward scatter detector. And this is proportional to the size, as we saw in the previous, uh, we, we, we saw this in details in the previous video. Uh, 
So forward scattered light is directly proportional to the size of the cell. Side scattered light is directly proportional to the complexity of the cell. And then the fluorescence will give me an information about which one of the cells is expressing the protein and which one of the cells is not expressing the protein. Now when the cell path through the, path through the laser beam, this is the laser beam. First of all, this is the forward scattered, which is uh, detected by the uh, by the forward scatter detector. The side scatter, which is detected by the side scatter detector. Um, and then I will ha and then when this when the fluorophore path through the laser beam, the fluorophore will be excited. And then when the fluorophore is excited, uh, the fluorophore will emit light at a particular wavelength. And then this light will be detected by the fluorophore detectors. All these detectors are connected to the computer, which is going to give me. Um, the exact data about every event of these three. Now, of course, when the cell is expressing more proteins, there will be more fluorescent, for fluorescence coming out, coming, out, coming out of this cell. At the end, I will get a data similar to this. So when the cell is expressing the protein, I will get a high peak. And then when the cell is not expressing the protein, I will get a small peak. And then the computer will give me something called the one-dimensional histogram, which is something similar to, to this. Here we have the cell count or the events, we call them the events passing through the laser beam. And here we have the signal of the fluorophore. So when I have a high signal of fluorophore, then, the, um, then these cells are the cells who are expressing the protein of interest. And the cells who give low signal on the fluorescence detectors are the cells who are not expressing the protein. What I can do further is to combine this data with other data as I have. So for example, I can uh, combine the data obtained from the fluorescence detectors with the data obtained from the forward scatter detectors, for example. So here I have the fluorophore, here I have the forward scatter, or here I have the fluorescence and forward scattered light. When the cell appear here, uh, it means that these, uh, these cells are small cells because they have low signal on the forward scatter and they have low signal on the fluorescence detectors, so they are not expressing the protein. When the cell appear here, it means that the cell is not expressing the protein because it has low fluorescence, but it's a big cell because it, ha uh, it has high signal on the forward scattered light. Then when the cell appear here, it means that it's expressing the protein, but it's a small cell. And when the cell appear on the upper right quadrant, it means that the cell is big and it's expressing the protein. So this is what we call, sorry, this is what we call the two dimensional histogram. I can combine two data together and then I get something like this. Now, what's special about fax mechanism, or what it, why it's called fax? Fax means fluorescence activated cell sorting, which means that this mechanism cannot only give me a, a cell count, cannot give me a data about the cell count or um, the percentage of the cell uh, expressing the protein and non expressing the protein, but also the fax can separate the cell mixture into two groups of cells. How does it work? Let's see. This is the fax mechanism. So here we have the uh, flow cell and here we have the cells passing one by, by one through the laser beam. When the cells pass one by one through the laser beam, uh, as we saw before, it will scatter light forward and, light sca and side scatter light and also fluores uh, fluorescence. All these events will be detected by the detector. At the end of the tube, there is something called drop formation. In drop formation, we have a mechanism called a vibrating mechanism. This vibrating mechanism will separate my mixture into small droplets. These droplets should contain only one cell by droplet. This is very important. Then what I can do as a user is that I can uh, adjust the settings, the settings of the uh, of the program, in order to charge the cells. So at the end of the tube, I have something called the electrical charging ring. 
The electrical charging ring is responsible to charge the cells according to my adjustment. So, for example, if I adjust the settings, for example, of the um, of the program, uh, I can ask the computer to charge the high fluorescent cells with a positive charge and the low fluorescent cells with a negative charge. Then the the, the electrical charging ring will charge the highly fluorescent uh, the cells will pass through the laser beam, the detector will detect the fluorescence, and then the computer will charge the high fluorescent cell with, with, negative, with positive charge, for example, and the low fluorescent cells with negative charge. I can choose actually. For example, if I have this data, this is a, the two-dimensional histogram, I can choose to um, charge uh, the, the big uh, big high fluorescent cells with a positive charge and the big low fluorescent cells with a negative charge and the other cells with the, with no charge. Then the neuter cells will go to the waste. Uh, these cells might be like debris. These might be like uh, just debris. I, I'm not interested in them. So I'm, uh, it depends what cells I'm interested in. So I can adjust the settings of the program and then the, pro the, the electrical charging ring will charge the cells. Then I, will, I, I have different electrodes like negative and positive electrodes and then the positive char uh, cells will go to the negative electrodes and the po negative cells will go to the positive electrodes and the neutral cells will go to the waste. In this case I will have two uh, groups of cells the cells who are expressing the protein and the cells who are not expressing the protein. And this is what we call cell sorting. Of course, I can also um, study two proteins, not only one. And this is done by using different... Uh, so, of course, to study two proteins, I, I need two specific antibodies because I need one specific antibody for each protein. But I need to label every antibody with a different uh, fluorophore. Of course, I have different fluorophores, and every fluorophore emit light in a different wavelength. I need to know um, every fluorophore, the, the, the wavelength every fluorophore emits light in. So um, if I use two different fluorophores, then I can uh, study two different um, Proteins. For example, this fluorophore emit light on a, uh, emits a green light or a light green light, and this fluorophore emits yellow light. So they are different wavelength. Um, then, if the cell is emitting only uh, ha or has only a green fluorophore, we can know that this cell is expressing one protein or the green protein. Uh, if the cell is emitting yellow, li yellow light, then the cell is expressing only the second protein. And if the cell is emitting two lights, then the, or giving two signals on the two detectors, uh, then we can say that the cell is expressing both proteins. Um, how can we detect two different wavelengths? As I, as I showed you before, um, the fax mechanism contains different detectors, different fluorescence detectors, and here we have the uh, filters, the light filters, which deliver a particular wavelength to the uh, to a particular detector. So every detector we detect a particular wavelength, and then we can use two different flu fluorophores if they emit light uh, on different wavelength. Okay. Um, we can also combine the data together, so I can uh, uh, like form this two-dimensional histogram again, but, but, but with the protein 1 and protein 2. So I have fluorophore 1, signal coming from fluorophore 1 and fluorophore 2. So when the cells are in, the, in, in this, uh, so when, when the cells are here, it means that these cells are expressing both proteins because they are giving high signal on uh, the first de detector on, on the second detector. Uh, if the cells are here, it means that they are expressing uh, protein 2, but they are not expressing protein 1. These cells are expressing protein 1 because they have high signal on uh, the detector of fluorophore 1, but they are not expressing protein 2 because they have low signal of the on the detector of fluorophore 2. 
and these cells are not expressing any of the proteins. Um, now I have like a real uh, two-dimensional histogram um, and this is like ideal to see how cells are shown in the two-dimensional histogram. So these cells, here we are studying two different proteins, CD14 and CD4. We are labeling CD14 with PE and we are labeling CD4 with feet C. We are labeling them with different uh, fluorophores. Then cells in this quadrum are expressing CD14, but uh, they are not expressing CD4. So we have CD4 min uh, uh, negative. Cells here are expressing both. They are giving high signal on both of them. So the CD14 positive, CD4 positive. These cells are CD14 and CD4 negative, negative, because they are giving low signal on both detectors. And these cells are expressing CD4. They are giving high signal on CD4 detector, or on feed C detector, but they are giving low signal on the other detector. So they are expressing only CD4. This is like a very simple example about how the data looks like in the two-dimensional histogram. Of course, there are m many, many, many uh, more complex data. So if you want me, uh, I cannot speak about everything in this video. So if you want me to do another video, especially about data analysis and gating, um, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, analysis, please write me in the comments. Um, as you know, now now we can we can uh, in the new fax ma machines we can analyze like tens of proteins and tens of cells in one time because new fax machines have like uh, uh, some machines like the most the, there are there is now one fax machine in the in the market which contains ten lasers and thirty detectors. Can you imagine 10 lasers and 30 detectors? So you can, you can uh, analyze many proteins and many cells uh, at one time. But of course, the, dat the data then will be much more complex than this data. This is a very simple data. If you want me to talk more about this, then write me in, in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't hesitate to like the video, share, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions for uh, other topics, write me in the comments and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.